Hello and welcome to our society members and our viewers from around the world. I'm Charles Knippen, the president of the National Society of Leadership and Success, and today I am happy to be hosting another episode in our Thought Leader series. In this series, we sit down with successful leaders and we give our viewers the opportunity to learn from their experiences. And today's interview is with Jeff Slingo. Jeff is a national bestseller. He is an award-winning columnist, and he is also the former top editor of the Chronicle of Higher Education. His work and his writing has been seen in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and also the Washington Post. And recently he has written a new book called There is Life After College that provides a roadmap, provides the navigation a student needs to understand how to turn their college into a job in the future. And so Jeff, thank you for being with us today. It's great to be here. Great. So let's jump right into it, shall we? Because your book, There is Life After College, it addresses a topic on so many of our students' minds, and that is why is it so difficult for recent graduates to make that transition from college into their career? Well, part of it's uh, the economy, right? The economy has not been great, particularly since 2008, but that's not the only reason because especially among recent college graduates, un unemployment has actually dropped, uh, particularly in the last couple of years. What I think the issue is, is that 20 or 30 years ago, a bachelor's degree really meant success in the job market. Didn't matter where you went, didn't matter what you majored in, didn't matter what you did in college. As long as you had a bachelor's degree, you were success in the job market, you would get a job. But now with industries kind of contracting, expanding at an alarming pace, uh, the world is much different, the world of work is much different, how companies hire is much different and their needs are different. Um, that requires students now to think about college differently and how they go to college. So to me, it's not about getting into college, it's not even about just getting that degree, but it's how you go to college, the experiences you have, both inside and outside the classroom, that are critical to success in the job market. Even getting to that point, though, of getting to colleges, you identify in your book three specific kinds of students right now. You have your sprinters, yep. the wanderers, and the stragglers. So can you talk a little bit about that? You know, even before they get to college, you know, for our students uh, and our members of our society, they're already in school. But right. for our viewers who are watching that, maybe going and making that transition into college, uh, what do those three categories mean? Right. And, you know, how can students identify where they are in those three and what's that best action step right. they can take? So uh, it was fascinating to me. As I, as I was researching this book for the last couple of years, I started to meet students in their mid-20s who were at very different stages in their lives, even though all of them had gone to college. Some graduated, some didn't. And so we did this national survey to find out how students in their mid-20s who have a couple of years uh, you know, to start their careers, how they started their careers. And what were the experiences, if we reverse engineered their careers, what were the experiences they had before college, during college, and after college that led them to where they are? And then we separate them into three groups. Um, and, and they are, as you said, the sprinters, the wanderers, and the stragglers. They're all, of, they're all about a third of, of, of graduates um, today. The sprinters are those that move out of college very quickly. Um, and they either get a job or they're on a pathway to success. That means they might go to graduate school. Um, but in most cases, they're in a job and they're at you know, either a big firm or a small firm, but they're in really good jobs. And, and they're, they're ready to pounce when, when opportunities uh, come along. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to think most people launch from college in that way, but as I said, only a third do. Two thirds are either wanderers or they're stragglers. And the wanderers are what I call the vast middle. A third of students who are still wandering when they're in their mid-20s, and, and what did they do in college? Well, they went to college not necessarily knowing what they wanted to major in, um, and thus they switched their majors many times. Uh, they didn't have the internships that are really required for success in the job market uh, today. They took on a lot of debt, um, which means that when they graduated from college, they had fewer options available to them. They couldn't move anywhere. They couldn't take any job that was available to them. They had to take a job that paid, um, and thus, most of those students take jobs that are not in their field of study. Um, and then there are what we call the stragglers. Um, those are folks who take most of their 20s um, to figure out what they want to do. And what's surprising to me is that a large number of them actually never graduate from college. Um, they go to college, um, and many of them have a lot of credits. In fact, we know from national studies, there are more people in their 20s with some college credit and no degree than there are people with degrees. So this is actually a very common, you know, everybody thinks, oh, I'll go to college and I'll graduate. Mm -hmm. right. But we know that, you know, fewer than 50% of students actually graduate from a four-year college in four years. Mm -hmm. um, so just because you go to college doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna graduate. And so you really need to be very focused on what you do um, in college in order to have success afterwards in the job market. 
and that even starts with the selection process. You know, and for those students who are in school right now and wondering, are they at the right school? One of the unique things that I think that you point out in your book is that it's all about location. Yep. And you know, when you talk about businesses, business talk, location, location, location. You know, usually the question is just like, how comfortable are you in as far as how far away you'll go to school? Right. But you actually kind of take that a step further and talk about location in terms of thinking about your career opportunities. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I, I went to school in, in kind of the middle of nowhere. I went to uh, my undergraduate alma mater is in Ithaca College, New York, and it was a great place and I still love it and I probably would go back again, but it's very isolated. Um, and maybe 20 or 30 years ago that was fine when most of your learning happened inside the classroom. And we used to think you would go off to college, right? Mm -hmm. That's the that, that was the term, right? And you would kind of grow up and, and mature and take courses from some of the great professors and mm -hmm. study in these, uh, in these in these out of the way places because most colleges are in somewhat out of the way uh, places in the US. The fact of the matter is today you need to have outside the classroom experiences just as much as you need inside the classroom experiences. So you need to be able to mash together um, those experiences on campus and off campus. Um, in other words, you need to do, be able to do research projects. Um, you need to be able to network. You need to be able to, most important, do internships. And not just an internship that last summer before your junior and senior year, but during the school year and during the summers. And we're better to do that than in urban and suburban areas where there's a lot of opportunity um, to interact with uh, your career field. Um, so location is incredibly important, um, urban and suburban, but also being connected to the fields you're going to um, uh, work in. So for example, if you want to be a filmmaker, you probably should go to school in New York or LA where mm -hmm. the film industry is, not somewhere else um, where, again, you're not going to necessarily have those opportunities. That doesn't mean that students should forget about those great out-of-the-way places. Um, right. You know, there's some great colleges mm -hmm. in, in the middle of Iowa and in the middle of Massachusetts, we know that. Um, but if they go to those schools, and again, I think they're great schools, they need to know they have to probably work a little bit harder to get those outside of the classroom experiences. During the summers, maybe they need to take a semester off mm -hmm. and go and study abroad or go and do a research project off campus. Um, they're gonna need to do that even if they're in those, in those smaller schools and out of the way places. Gotcha, very interesting, especially for our students who are currently at a school and considering where they chose, yes. but then also for our new students who are you know, considering where they're gonna go. Well, and I think that's important. You mentioned in terms of picking schools, you know, a lot of students pick schools where they feel comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they have family nearby. Maybe it's been in a, it's in a city or a place they've been to before, or maybe they choose them, and a lot of students do for recreational opportunities, mm -hmm. right? They like to ski and they want to be near the mountains and, mm -hmm. and or near the beach, for example. When they pick location, they should also think about those outside the classroom opportunities. I think that's a key piece of information that they should be thinking about when they do pick a college. Absolutely. Um, and another interesting concept that you introduce in your book are the detours. Yes. You know, and again, for our students who are either members right now and, you know, trying to, they're, maybe they're wandering, they're, or maybe they're in that straggler group, um, can you talk a little bit about what the concept of the de yes. detour is and, you know, how it applies for students going into school or students currently right. in school? Don't get me wrong, everybody needs a post-secondary education. Uh, education after high school is actually, is absolutely critical in this uh, job market uh, today. But the fact of the matter is, is that we really have one pathway. Um, largely for students. They graduate from high school, three months after high school they go right to college. Uh, and many of the students who went right to college not knowing what they wanted to do, weren't sure their, of their major, wasn't, weren't sure of even the institution they picked, mm -hmm. they end up being the wanderers and the stragglers later on. I was able to make a direct connection between many of those students. What would have helped? Probably a gap year. Um, and you know, our we think of a gap year as, oh, we're going to send our kids off to Europe and they're going to backpack <laughs> through Europe. There are so many, and I have many of these examples in the book, there are so many new programs now that are very intensive. Uh, they're very focused on academics, they're very focused on career development, they're very focused on leadership development. And students who come out of there, even after just one year, report that they're much more mature, they're much more ready for college, they know what they want to do, and the research shows they actually graduate just at the same rate as students who would normally go right on to college. So there's no, there's no delay in graduating mm -hmm. from college. But that's not the only detour you can take. You can also take detours during college. Um, there should be no rush to, to get ready for the job market, right? The job market's gonna be there whether you're 22 or 25. You wanna be better prepared, mm -hmm. and there's no other opportunity in your life to better prepare for the job market than when you're in your 20s. It's really when you should be investing the most in your human capital. It's been said that your 20s is the dress rehearsal for the rest of your life. Um, 
and you really should be ready for that show. And to be ready for that show, take your time in your 20s mm -hmm. and invest in that human capital. And that's a nice segue to the next question because, you know, one of the best assets of the book is the, I don't want to say step-by-step, -step, but kind of like a step-by-step -step plan that students right. can utilize in getting themselves ready for that transition into their career. Can you kind of give an overview of that plan that you put into your book and what you hope students um, get out of that, you know, as far as how they can apply it to their life? Yes, I mean, so really, again, going to college, it's not just about going to college anymore. It's about the opportunities that you have in college. And so to me, it's about thinking about whether you want to take a gap year before college. Once you're in college, picking that major is a critically important. You know, a major doesn't necessarily mean a career. I think you should pick a major that is going to be interesting to you, where you're going to get a lot of opportunities to work on projects and do deep reading and deep learning with some great professors. Mm -hmm. um, you need multiple internships, not just one internship between your junior and senior year. So you need to think about building those internship opportunities from your freshman year through your, um, through your senior year. Because what you want to have at the end of your undergraduate career is a story. I spend a whole chapter talking about the story of somebody's career. Um, when you go to employers today, they're going to want to know that you can tell them a narrative about your learning and your learning experience. And again, they don't want you just to hand them a transcript or a degree <laughs> mm -hmm. because a lot of people have those today. What they want to be able to know, to know is what are the experiences you had you know, from high school through college that really enable you to do the job and, ha and, and also enable you to have the skills that they want to have today. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be able to need to tell that narrative. Um, and the only way you're going to have a narrative to tell is if you've had those experiences over the course of the four years and show how they connect to what you're able to do in that job and in that career. It really is that changing that paradigm, that shift of thinking of I'm just going after a degree to I'm creating a story. Yes. And so, you know, as part of that story, you know, you've picked your college, you've picked your major, you've done some internships. Talk to us about the importance of um, what you do outside the classroom as far as getting involved in clubs, groups, activities, yep. um, things like the society that yep. you know, help students build those leadership skills, build those soft skills that employers are looking for. Tell us how that plays a part right. into you know, the student So experience. you mentioned a key word, soft skills. I actually think they should be called the hard skills because they're <laughs> incredibly hard to teach. Mm -hmm. You don't just learn these soft skills, which are communication and teamwork and problem solving by going to classes, right? you need to actually engage in working through those skills. And most of that time, it happens in outside the classroom experiences. You know, whether that is you know, study abroad or research experiences or internships, but it really does happen also in co-curricular um, activities. And part of the problem is that students are encouraged to be you know, a jack of all trades, right? They're encouraged to be broad, to be well-rounded is the word we hear, use often. I'm not discouraging students to be well-rounded, but they also have to be deep in something, mm -hmm. right? I heard so often from both college officials and uh, employers, we see so many students with what they call sign-up clubs, mm -hmm. right? They sign up for something, they never do anything with it, they, you know, they never actively engage in something. Mm -hmm. um, and so employers that I talk to really like people who go deep in an activity. So they love, this is one reason why a lot of employers like college athletes, because they show up, every day to do something. They know how to lose. Mm -hmm. They know how to, because they probably lose mm -hmm. more often than they win. Mm -hmm. They know how to work in teams. But the key is they've dedicated hours and hours of practice and time to something that they actually showed commitment and they've learned from that um, commitment. And so that could be anything. That could mm -hmm. be a club, that could be a sport, um, that could be an activity, whether it's you know, music or gaming, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter what the ac actual activity is. Mm -hmm. It matters that you've spent the time and went deep in it. This, uh, this theory that Malcolm Gladwell talks about all the time, the yeah. 10,000 hours theory, right? That you dedicated 10,000 hours of time to something. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the, really the skill that, um, uh, or the, the attribute that employers are looking for today, that you went deep in one activity at the same time that you're also, you know, had a broad-based education. Beyond the student experience and beyond even the parent experience, you have the administrator who is at the campuses and are supporting these students through this process. What's the shifting paradigm for them and how can they support their students through this? Well, I think the big shifting paradigm for them is that, first of all, they never thought they were training students for a job. Um, and I still don't believe they are. I think they're giving students the skill set that they need to succeed in the, in the job market. The job market is changing so much, it's almost impossible to train somebody for a job. But the big difference, I think, for the shifting paradigm for administrators is that this is a four-year journey. 
or if you go to a community college, a two-year journey, right? It's not something that you think about in the last semester of your final year in college. And I think for generations of college students, the belief was I get into college, I focus on my studies for a couple of years, and then I think about getting a job that second semester of my senior year. And the big shift when I talk to career offices on campuses is the number of recruiters now that are focused on interns and not full-time employees. Mm -hmm. So now at major companies, and this is starting to filter down even to smaller companies, 50 to 75 percent of the new hires come from their intern pools, wow. which means that if you didn't intern there, you have no chance of getting a job there. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have the best internships, that means you had to have the other internships at other companies that lead up to those best internships. Mm -hmm. And so that, again, starts your freshman year thinking about that journey to your senior year and what is the outcome that you want. Wow. Uh, I think for a lot of students, a lot of administrators um, and parents, that's going to be a shift. It's a, it's a, it was a big shift in thinking for me. Mm -hmm. um, and this is really has happened over the last decade. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I was in college about 20 years ago, I had a great internship between my junior and senior year. But I really didn't think about internships you know, my freshman year. I thought mm -hmm. about working and you know, earning money and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I really didn't think about what I was going to do after college until I became a junior or senior. And mm -hmm. the, th the thinking now is that especially if you want you know, have the best careers and the best jobs afterwards, you really need to start thinking about that earlier. And for colleges, and this is why it's important for colleges, is that I don't think they really focus, except for a exception of a few, mm -hmm. they don't focus career services and advising on careers that early, mm -hmm. right? They mostly focus them on juniors and seniors, and they really need to start at freshman year. We have the administrators and the students in that equation, but then you also have this other group, parents. And uh, you know it's a unique position that they play uh, in the in their child's uh, educational experience. And so, what is it, and how does the book speak to them? And what do you hope a parent takes away from this book? A couple of things. I hope parents relax a little bit. I mean, this is a high anxiety period. Getting your son or daughter into college, getting them through college, paying for college, mm -hmm. you know, high anxiety. Um, a couple of things I hope they get. One is that this journey is not over just when you get your son or daughter into college. And I think that most parents breathe a sigh of relief and they say, oh, my son or daughter got into college, they're going to be fine. Um, you know, again, just having a college degree doesn't equal success. The other thing is it takes students a lot longer to launch today than it did 20 or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So the average age of financial independence for today's college graduates is 30. That's when they reach the median wage in the U.S. In 1980, they reached that wage at 26, wow. right? So we have this longer pathway um, to a, a, a degree, and I don't think that, or to financial independence, and I don't think that's a negative thing, mm -hmm. right? We're working long, we're gonna be living longer, we're gonna be working longer. Again, we should spend more of our 20s investing in that human capital mm -hmm. that will pay off in our 30s, uh, 40s, and 50s. And then finally, the other message that I hope parents get, there's a lot of focus on helicopter parents today. <laughs> you know, and so, one fear I have of parents reading this book is that they'll, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll worry more about their mm -hmm. children and they'll focus more on making sure they have all those internships and they do all those things. Mm -hmm. The biggest attribute, though, that employers want in today's college graduates is this ability to navigate ambiguity, mm -hmm. right? The world is changing in such a way that we have no idea what the jobs of tomorrow are going to be. Mm -hmm. the, ch the, the students that end up doing the best after school are those that were kind of left on their own to figure things out. Mm -hmm. So if parents do the, just the opposite, if they yeah. figure out everything for their son or daughter, they're actually not equipping them with what employers need today. So we talk about parents, and you know we've talked a lot of different concepts in this book for students. You know, For this millennial generation that may be picking this up and reading this, if you were to say the summary of this, right. you know, the three key points that you want a student to take away from your book, how would you summarize that? Um, careers are changing, and thus it's about getting the soft skills. Um, worry less about the hard skills of a particular job, and worry more about learning how to work in teams, learn how to communicate both written and verbally, and also learn how to problem solve. Um, that's what empl um, um, employers most want in this uh, in this in this new economy. So, okay. you know, focus less on your major, focus more on on gaining those skills. Number two. This is a journey, a four-year journey, not a one-year journey. Mm -hmm. So think about what you want to do after college, beginning your freshman year. Not to put too much pressure on the <laughs> students, but they really do need to think about this as a, as, as a four-year journey. And then number three, and I think this is not only the choices you make before you go to college, but after you go to college, 
have flexibility. Mm -hmm. Be what some people call occupationally footloose. Um, mm -hmm. Learn different skills, learn different jobs, explore. Explore a little bit in college, explore after college. Because again, what you invest in your 20s is gonna have huge dividends in your 30s, 40s, and, and throughout your career. I love that. Um, occupationally footloose. footloose. Yep. I've never heard that term before, that's wonderful. I wanna shift away a little bit from the book and put the focus back on you for a second. Why this book? Why this career? What was the inspiration in your own? As these leaders are getting the stories and they may be inspired in their particular fields and what they're pursuing right now, what was the inspiration for you going back into your own you know, experience in college yeah. and maybe beyond that inspired you to want to say, I want to make a career out of helping students, right. administrators, parents, navigate this process called college. Right. Well, first of all, this shows that nobody picks a career at 18, right? Um, you know, a lot of students think they know what they want to do when they go to college and, and their minds change, right? I've wanted to be a journalist now for probably since I was in middle school. Um, I wanted to be a television correspondent that, you know, traveled the world. And uh, I end up at Ithaca College uh, and the second day of school, I meet somebody else who also wanted to do the same thing and who was enormously talented. And to be honest with you, wanted it more than I did. Um, and so at that point, I started to think, is this really what I want to do? And so I focused a lot more on writing, um, ended up becoming a newspaper writer, a magazine editor, uh, over the last uh, 20 years covering higher, um, higher education mostly. Um, and so a couple of years ago, I wrote a book called College Unbound, mm -hmm. um, which was my first book about the future of higher education. And, and as I started talking to parents and students about what the future of higher education would hold, they would all say, well, wait a second. You know, my son or daughter just graduated from college and they can't get a job. Mm -hmm. Or they got a job and it's not a job that really should require a, um, a bachelor's degree, you know. Mm -hmm. And I started to think, well, not only is higher education changing, but the job market is changing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I wanted to study how the job market was changing and how students today could be better prepared for that job market. And that's what led me um, down this pathway. And it was interesting, the same day that um, Harper Collins, my publisher, decided to take this book, um, that person I met in college, the second oh day of gosh. college, was named anchor of ABC World News. Um, David Muir was my <laughs> uh, college roommate. Um, so it also just shows you how pathways change uh, throughout your lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really important for students to remember, um, that college provides you a chance to um, learn from your peers um, in both good ways and bad, right? They might push you in different directions that you never thought was possible. Um, and I, I think that you need to keep that open mind um, because careers and jobs are, are ever evolving. Mm -hmm. Well, Jeff, I want to thank you for sharing your insights, not only through your book, but through the words that you share with our viewers today. It has been absolutely eye-opening, um, I think, just for myself, but then also for all of our members to hear your words and to have a better understanding of that shifting paradigm. So one of the ways that we want to thank you is providing an honorary membership to the National Society of Leadership and Success. So we want to thank you again for sharing your insights with our audience. This is great, and thank you very much, and good luck to all the students out there. Absolutely, and I couldn't say it any better myself. Members, viewers, we hope you uh, benefited from watching Jeff uh, today and sharing his message about your future success and what you can do to get there. We wish you all the best in your college career and wish you the best on your journey to being a leader who makes a better world.